Right, well there is another way you can do this and I'll still probably get the Loctite anyway, but there's to take a um, centre punch, one centre punch, nice sharp one, there it is, nice sharp centre punch, and just centre punch some holes, some little um, dots around the inside of that, give you a bit of metal to work with, it's got to grip it, we'll give that a go. Do not recommend this for cars. No, nothing is going to be driven at constant high speed. You don't want the bearing spinning up and seizing in your car. But this is one way of doing it. It's called the rough and ready way. It's the um, when you've got no other alternative way. Right. A few little dots in there, like that. Remember, not on cars, thank you. Anything that's going to be driven at high speed for any length of time, like, not like this method. However, this is a trailer, not going to be driven at high speed, it's going to be used for taking rubbish to the dump. And it's not going to get driven at 70 to 80 miles an hour. Okay, see if that made any difference to it. Focus the camera. Have a look at that. I'll edit that film because it's got a few little wonks and wobbles in it, so we don't really want that at the present time. So that looks okay in there. Let's see if she goes in now. Alright, try that. It's a little bit tighter. Not a lot, but it's a little bit. Yeah, that's picking up now. Are you even? This is what we hardened. Going in. Going in, that's almost home. That is home. Hear that? Home. Now that's tight. Look at it from the back to see if it's seated. And it is. Right around. Okay? So that's tight. Now that's one of the ways you can overcome that problem. If you don't have Loctite, you can do that. Um, that bearing will stay where it's supposed to stay there forever and a day now. Right, next trick. To get some uh, grease into this. Put that down there like that so it stays up. That's what I'm doing. A couple of little tricks about doing these bearings here, which will be useful for you to follow. You don't need any particular. All you need is a glove and a hand and a bit of grease. Right. Well, since I'm not anxious to put. Uh, grease all over myself this afternoon. What I'll do is I'll put on this little glove here, lovely pink glove. Yeah, perfect, perfect colour for this. This is the glove for whooshes around the place. Okay, it has got it. Grease. Let's see if it's childproof. Apparently it is. Maybe that's supposed to tear, is it? No, I see. And that allows you to take the top off, does it? Oh, it does too. Goodness, how about that? Miracle of modern work. There we go. Come on, old garden variety, wheel bearing grease, but it's high temperature. So you get a fistful of that. Make it in here. Get around in there, like that. A bit more in. Don't overpack it, doesn't need it. Right, that's pretty good. 
the idea is to have a bit of grease that will sort of will continue to feed the bearing as it goes and heats up and does stuff like that because it does get a bit loose. The idea is to have that in there, but just only take it up to the to the general level of it. Okay, in there like that. That's pretty good, I think. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Now you don't have a you don't have a thing to pack the grease with. This is what you do. You lift this like that, and you go in there like that. Okay, and you get the bearing, and you knock it in like that. Believe me, it will work. Grease out, back on your hand. Okay, now the parts that hasn't gone through, you do that. Okay, then you turn it over, and you go back the other way with it. And you take the grease out of there, back in your hand, get hold of it, work it. In this case, it isn't going to work, so. Yes, it will. It's turning. That's what you want it to do. You want to get in there and coat the bearing, right? See how that's going around there? Just keep putting some grease on it. Take the grease in around it, like that. Very messy, but it's quite effective. I've been doing it this way for ages. Used to do it in the garage. I used to do it with a with a packer. But you can find you can do it this way quite easily. Here, just to grab hold of this for a minute. Right there. Just hold that a bit better. Get off the. Right. Okay, it's pretty good. Get in there. I'm reasonably happy with that. See the grease is following it around. Put a bit more in there just to be sure. Just in there, pack it in there like that. In there, in there. Right there. One seal. That seal needs a bit of grease on it too, so there's plenty here to do that with. Right there, now careful with these seals. That there. We'll take this off. Let's have it. Get my rubbish tin. Clean the hand, clean the hand up. That's the result of uh, an accident with tools. Even when you're very careful, you can certainly slice your fingers, and I've managed to do it. So, this is the end All right, here we go. Down flat, hammer, clean the face. Okay, he's going to be a bit tricky to start. under here to get in behind the seal. Make sure it picks up into the bearing. That's good. Okay, we'll turn it over. Guess what? Only for a glove there. This one the same way. Alright, get some stuff in there, move it around. Cut it up. You know, cut it up. Smaller bearing, it's a bit hard to do. Move it around, you'll hear it whether it you hear it when it starts to get in there and lubricate. Because you'll hear a scraping sound if it's not all good. Alright, we just do this one here, that like that. Same again. Dry the bearings, grease through it. Off the back, get back here. Good, that's it. Done. Turn it in there to make sure it's pulling it around, which it is, and that's it. 
Well, that hub's ready to go back on. We've got all the other parts ready for it. Clean the grease off. Put the rubbish in the rubbish tin. And that's what you get. Packed. Packed. All good. Okay. So what will happen there is uh, when it goes back on, the guitar will be cleaned down, put a bit of paint on it, just to make it look nice, and that'll be good. So that's the bearing side of things at the present time. There's the cap for it. Cap on there. Not ready for any other parts yet, but the other pieces are washed up for it. So that's what happens. Don't over tighten these things, right? Do them up till the wheel gives resistance. Then back it off until it runs free. And then take it up a castellation at a time until it's firm, but still spins freely. You can check it with the uh, um, torque wrench if you want to, but if you do it that way, you'll find that in most cases, it will run like that forever and a day. And if you overload your bearings, you're gonna chop them out in no time at all. Underload them, you've got a problem there because you'll destroy your hub. So it's very important that you pre-tension and put a load on these bearings because they are taper roller. They are meant to roll with preload. Ball bearings are not. You do not preload a ball bearing. A ball bearing goes in there and it sits freely to rotate within the, uh, the housing. These are not. These are meant. These are meant to have pressure against the bearing here onto that face and to transfer the load. Very important. And remember, that size of bearing has been used on a car that weighs um, 2,600 weight or say 3,000 pounds for a long while, so it shows you how tough they are. Okay, that's enough for now. We'll leave it at that. Thanks for listening.